Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ifei. I'm an engineer from Apollo team. Oops. Uh, I'm an engineer from Apollo team. And today I will talk about real-time relative map, uh, which released in Apollo 2.5. So this is a simple diagram for Apollo 2.0. So uh, at the bottom is the planning and the control module. It relies on the perception and the HD map. So the perception output the dynamic obstacles, and the HD map provides uh, static map elements. So in Apollo 2.5, uh, we introduced the vision-based perception, which just presented by Tyen, and it can also output this uh, real-time map elements. For example, uh, land markers. Compared with the static map elements from HD map, the real-time map elements are computed uh, online, and also it's the coordination of the elements are in vehicle coordination. So which means the elements don't require any uh, localization information. So uh, in order to combine these two type of map elements together and provide a uniform map interface to planning and control. So we developed this relative map component. So this module takes map elements from either perception or HD map or the combination of both to provide the relative map data to planning and control. So here the relative map data means all the, uh, the coordination of all the map elements is relative to the vehicle. And the vehicle is always at the position of 0, 0, and the heading of the vehicle is always 0, 2. So that's about why we uh, introduced this relative map module in Apollo 2.5. Uh, the other issue we target and solved in Apollo 2.5 is uh, related to HD map. Uh, as we all know that HD map is not readily available yet for developers. And making a HD map is costly and also time consuming. So, however, without a HD map, it's very hard to test the Apollo on road. So in order, in order to solve that issue, uh, we introduced this navigator module. Uh, it's similar with the HD map. It provides a static map elements we call the navigation line. The navigation line will be passed to the relative map. It's an input for relative map. So the navigation line is pre-collected human driving because the data is all controlled by a human driver. So it's safe and smooth. More importantly, so after we get this human driving data, the navigation line can be generated automatically without any manual labeling. So the cost is very low. And also navigation line can work, with together, uh, work together with uh, vision-based perception and to generate basic map information, which is enough for a very simple uh, driving scenario, like a freeway or rural area. Navigation line can also be combined with HD map to provide complete map information, which to handle more complicated scenarios, for example, like a city road. Okay. So now I will give an example to illustrate how this relative map and the along with navigation line works uh, in the autonomous driving scenario. So let's assume we would like to deploy uh, autonomous driving in the highlight scenario. I highlight areas here uh, in a map. So bef before we really drive the vehicle autonomously, we, as I mentioned, we have to collect this uh, navigation line. We need to have a human drive, driver to drive, the, drive along the three lanes in the we select area and to collect the human driving pass. After that, we convert it to navigation line as shown here in green color. And after that, uh, let's assume we would like to autonomously drive the car from point A to B. The first, we send the routing request from A to B to a regular map 
uh, map system, for example, like a Baidu map or a Google map. Here we show an example. It's a real data we get from um, Google map, the road level routing uh, in the blue color. So after we get this road level routing, uh, we, we try to find the most matched navigation line uh, from the data we collected before. As shown here, the yellow color lines. The reason we provide multiple navigation lines because we want to give the planning module the flexibilities to switch the lines before he reach the destination, uh, the position B. Uh, for example, if, uh, if there's a one obstacle uh, on the one line, uh, the planning can switch to the neighbor lines and pass the obstacle then switch back. In that case, the planning can still finish the task to reach the destination B. So after we got this navigation line, we can start the autonomous driving. And during the driving, uh, the relative map will be computed and uh, updated in turn hertz. And the relative map will receive two types of input. One is the line, ma uh, line maker from the exact, uh, perception. Uh, but the information may be uh, in point, Apollo 2.5, we, we only support the line markers but the, the, the more information can be supported in the later version. The other, inform, the other input is the navigation line. So with this, uh, depend on the input availability and also the status of the input, then the, the relative map will be run in three modes. But in the most one, uh, the mode one, uh, location, uh, location information is not available, which means we cannot project the vehicle location to the position of the navigation line. So we cannot use the navigation line, in other words. So the only information we have is the land markers from perception. In that case, we, the vehicle still can run in the mode of uh, land keeping or adaptive uh, cruise control. Meanwhile, the vehicle can wait the recovery of the localization to use the navigation line. So which is the mode two? Uh, in this mode, the, the relative map gets both uh, land marker information and also the navigation line because of the recovery of the localization. And in this case, the relative map will combine the information of land marker and the navigation line together to generate the map data and pass it to the planning module. So the mode two is uh, land marker may not be available. For example, in this case, the, the vehicle is in the middle of the intersection. There's no uh, land markers available here for detection. So in this, in this case, the relative map only have the navigation line available. So that will be the main information used for generating the map. So the, uh, the, learn, the learn marker or the learn boundary can be estimated, uh, either can be estimated based on the history data or just directly extracted from uh, associated HD map. So in the above examples, uh, so navigation line plays uh, multiple roles. The first, it is a learn level route. The, the navigation line connects the start point with the uh, destination. So it guarantees that the vehicle can reach the destination. And the second row is the navigation line is not only the line information, it also provides a set of parameters for uh, each land uh, point, uh, which include the uh, hiding and the uh, curvature, uh, derivative of the curvature, which can be used for planning module to uh, generate the reference line based on the navigation line information. Oops. The navigation line is also an information carrier to carry the HD uh, to, uh, if the HD map information is available, we can attach or associate the information along the navigation line. That means we need to load all the HD map into the system, but only the partial. And the last, Navigation line is the input for relative map. It's also an important component for relative map. Okay. 
Now I will talk about the component uh, navigator which generates the navigation line. I will explain what's the navigator and how the navigation line is generated from that module. So we implement the navigator as a cloud service. Uh, on the cloud side, we have two databases. One is for the navigation line. The other is for the HD map. So we also have a set a set of processors to process the data and generate the navigation line. As we mentioned before, first we need to collect the human driving data and uh, we upload it. We have the interface to, for user to upload the data to the cloud side. We have a set of processors to process the human driving data and generate the navigation line, put it into a database. After all the data ready, when, we, when the user selects a destination on Dreamview, Dreamview will submit the routing request to the cloud side. We have this routing request processor module to receive that routing request. The first, it will forward the request to the Google Map API. And uh, to get the, this uh, road level routing. After we get the road, uh, road level routing, the processor will, based on that information, to find the most matched navigation line from the database, if there any uh, exist one. And also, the processor will check the HD map, see if there are any associated, associated HD map information there. If there is one, then will be associated with the navigation, navigation line and the navigation line will be sent back to uh, Dreamwheel. Dreamwheel will forward it to the relative map and the uh, other modules there. So this is how the navigation line is generated from the cloud side. In addition to this uh, cloud service, we also have this offline navigator tools, uh, which can be run on vehicle to automatically and uh, uh, in the real time to generate this uh, navigation line. It is a set of uh, Python script. It takes uh, human driving data and uh, to process it and generate the navigation line and uh, publish it to a ROS topic. Then the other module can see the navigation line information. So the detailed usage guide is available on GitHub. So this is a really nice document. Uh, contributed by our external developers. So this is a general architecture for Apollo 2.5. So I highlight a few modules which I present in, in my talk, and uh, the navigator and the offline navigator. So here in the middle is the relative map. So it takes input uh, from perception, which is mainly for the real-time map elements and also the vehicle localization uh, from localization module. Relative map also can get the navigation line either from the navigator through the dream view or the offline navigator. After the, after the relative map get all the information, it will decide which mode it will be run into and then generate the map, uh, the map data, send it to prediction module and the planning module. So about the relative map uh, modes, so I, we already talked about there's the three modes. So here we will do the comparison. The module one is mainly based on the landmarker from perception. And the module two is based on the navigation line plus the landmarker. And the mode three is uh, really about the HD map we attached on the navigation line. So in terms of the usage scenario, uh, mode one is mainly for this lane keeping or ACC, and the mode two is targeted for this simple driving scenarios, like freeway or rural area. And the mode three, because of we have HD map, we have a complete uh, map information there, so it can handle the more complicated case. For example, like a city road. In terms of the level of autonomous driving, uh, mode one is kind of belong to L3, and the mode three belong to 
L4. Navigation line plus the line marker, the mode 2, is in the middle. So for the deployment cost, mode 1 is based on perception only. It's all the information is completely online. So there is no any uh, pre-collected data cost. So the cost is low. It's almost zero. So for the mode 2, because we need to collect the uh, navigation line. But that, that process can be done through a kind of like a cross-sourcing based approach. So the cost is also relatively low. The mode 3 because of the HD map, so the cost is, uh, is high. Okay. For the localization request, because the perception is all the map elements from generated from perception is uh, based on the local coordination. So there's no localization information required. And the mode two and the mode three, because we use this uh, static mapping, map elements, it requires the localization information in order to project the vehicle position on the navigation line. Okay, the last is uh, about the road, road condition requirement. Um, Perception-based approach, the mode one, is really required a very high, uh, the good, uh, good road condition uh, because it's vision-based. It, at least the land marker should be uh, visible and uh, detectable. And the mode two is kind of lower the requirement because we have the navigation land there. We can estimate the uh, land marker information somehow based on the partial information there. And the mode three, because we have HD map, it includes all the information. So there's no road condition or landmark requirement from mode three. So that's a comparison. Now I would like to share a video. Our partner CD uh, deployed Apollo 2.5 on their uh, heavy duty track uh, using the relative map along with this vision based perception. So let's watch how they made it.长沙智能驾驶研究院致力于重卡智能驾驶研发自动驾驶大大的提升重卡运输的安全性我认为这是最重要的自动驾驶呢可以节约时间成本运营成本以及能源消耗这次发布的二点五低成本高速自动驾